Doc, doctors, is it time? Is okay, I need to be careful. We need to do an episiotomy. Oh my god, we're having the baby right now. Keep pushing, honey. You're fully dilated. Push, honey, push! Oh, I'm so nervous. 100 over 40, but steady. Oh, what if he's black? Oh. Heart rate dropping. Oh, no. Okay, here, here we go. Push, push! It's, it's crowning. Oh my god! Push! There it goes. He's here! He's here! Oh. Let's wipe it off. Oh my god. It's beautiful. <sighs> Good morning. It's Sunday, May 18th, and you're watching the season two debut of Discussion Points. It's your boys, Ryan Morris and Brandon Fleming. We're in cahoots. Brandon, big <sighs> event this week. Yeah, as you Needs just to saw. Be acknowledged. As you just saw. You were there. You, the viewer, were just there in the delivery room. Tuesday, May 18th or May 13th, 11:38 p.m. The birth of Frisbee baby Isaac Joseph <sighs> Michael Fleming. Seven pounds six ounces. That was vital stats. What else? He's he's healthy. Yeah. What can we expect from Isaac in 2014? Well, uh, oh, in 2014, from Isaac, what we will call the Frisbee baby, uh, you can expect a lot of naps and uh, breastfeeding, tons of breastfeeding, and likely to take his father away from his perfect uh, consecutive games, uh, consecutive days played streak. Okay. So, really not much... Good to expect in the first year of life. No, right? you think maybe he'll make his debut by, say, maybe 2000... Look at 2017. 2017? Yes. Oh, all right. I was going to say maybe 2027 or 28. No. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, with the birth of Isaac, we... Which is really miraculous, by the way. <laughs> was it? Yeah. The miracle of birth has happened for the <laughs> 8 billionth time. Yes. Okay. It was miraculous and precious. All right, well, with that birth, we recognize the, the preciousness of life, and not only the preciousness, the duality. There's birth and there's also death. Yeah, you'll always find a, a, a balance, whether it's with good and evil, with hot and ugly, and with life and death. And with death, who do you think we might see die during 2000? Okay, I think I know where you're going with this. Okay, where, where we have a new life being ushered in, you want to know who's going to be ushered out to maintain that balance in the Utica Frisbee Club. Okay, so Isaac Fleming is introduced to the Utica Frisbee Club, and to cut that down, we're, we're likely to see some people die this year, just to balance that out. Statistical probability, yeah. Now, it's, uh, it, exactly, and there are certain members in the Utica Frisbee Club who have a higher proclivity to die this year, mm -hmm. just based on their behaviors, um, and, and even then, just because you may not live a precarious lifestyle does not mean that you're you're any uh, less exempt yeah. from from the uh, from the reaper. Um, okay, so you want to you want to you want to yeah. guess who's gonna die this year? Yes. All right, so we're going off the top of my head. Um, I'll start with me, myself, okay. Ryan. Yeah. Uh, it's very possible that your boy could die this year. Um, but you you want to know why? Yeah, why. Okay, know, right. I, I, I mean, you, you figure fatherhood is gonna is gonna bring down my uh, my list of, uh, of of dangerous activities down a notch, right? Like um, doing pull ups on street lamps uh, on a Saturday night, Thursday, running out in the middle of traffic, stealing yeah. stuff, maybe getting shot. No, no, no. I'm Less gonna, fun it, in general, yeah. probably. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go down with that. But my risk of death is increased. I'm gonna die from lack of sleep. Yeah. I. I, I, mean, could, I could totally see maybe myself. Maybe in a car accident, you're overtired. Staying up all night, trying to take care of this kid and make him yeah. into a man. Yeah. I don't get any sleep. I'm on my way to work to make money, provide for my family. I fall asleep. I drift into an oncoming lane. See, I, I see another scenario playing out for you. You you haven't been able to get in the weight room as much during 2014. So you're still going to go, when you go back, you're going to be thinking you're still the Brandon Fleming of old, macho, okay. weightlifting guy. You're going to be trying to bench way too much. You're going to be That's going to fall on my neck? No, I think you're going to be benching 180, and it's going to be too much for you, and you're going to go to cardiac arrest, and that's going to be it. <laughs> I still think it's the, really lightest, the lightest bench press death ever recorded. <laughs> and I think that could be you. Hey, Who else do you have dying? Okay, uh, I also have... Um, 
I think you said last night, last night's production meeting. I think you said Katie was. Oh God! Yes, person. yeah. Katie, Katie, easily. Uh, all right, right now, she's. Uh, she, she, let's see what's going on in her life. She is graduating from college this year. She has uh, a good-looking boyfriend who's really strong. Um, she was recently. Uh, she just won the the. It was the state. She won states. You know, won state third in ECAC. Three thousand twenty nine in the country. I'm, I'm keeping track of her stats. Everything is going great for this girl. Do you just think it's all gonna come? It's it's like the perfect lifetime story. Tragedy strikes. Sure. You think so? Yeah, I can I can see that. You know, Katie's out in a long run. She lives up up in up in Deerfield. You got cars driving around these bends. Splatters her her innards are her innards are all over somebody's farm out uh. up in Deerfield. It's, it'd be really too bad. But running <laughs> running in rural on rural roads is very dangerous. Yeah, she I agree. Part in that. I'm just trying to picture her last words, like when she takes her last breath. She'd be like, I don't know, it'd be. She she'd probably go like, whoa, ah, this <laughs> sucks. That's what she would say. This sucks. Yeah. That'd be her last words. Uh, all right, and I got one more. I really think that this is more likely than the others to happen. Um, who's gonna die? Nick Bruno. Ooh. He's gonna die this year. No frizzy video this year. Come on. <laughs> Please, not Nick Bruno. Someone will Don't take, take him from. Someone will take a uh, pass. All right, but. Now, you're wondering, why? How, yeah, how, how is he going to die? Nick Bru- he doesn't live uh, an ostentatious lifestyle. He doesn't live, I don't think he lives on the edge. He does stuff. This one's simple. This one's simple. Joel Akani is going to kill him. Ooh. He's going to beat him to death with his bare hands. <laughs> Probably on the, uh, on, the, on the field after, uh, after a touchdown celebration. One of his classic ones. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like that or... One of those, right, I can right. see, I can see. But no, Joe Lacani and Nick Bruno's feud goes way back. And we're not trying to start anything on this show. We're not like trying to add feud to that. But, I mean, I, I, can, see a, I can see a TMZ cell phone video of Nick Bruno getting beaten to death. Okay. Um, I hope it doesn't happen. I'll state that. But. All right, I have a few, a few uh, of my candidates who come to mind immediately. Andre. Andre takes part in lawn mowing. And, you know, some of those places in Whitesboro, you got some hilly terrain you're going over. If that mower tips over, it could come right back down on him, slice him to death. No more Andre. Okay, that would, more that would be the worst case scenario. Uh, maybe even worse is if it touched, if it like cut his face and he still lived. Mmm. Why be Andre if you're not going to have that face is what you're saying. His cheek structure is unparalleled by anyone in the Utica Frisbee Club. So. My other candidate is Jay Spliff. Jay Spliff, say he's late at night, he leaves a spliff sparked in, his, in an ashtray, he falls asleep. House catches on fire, burns, uh, burns down with him in it. He's done. Maybe even rat two, <laughs> two, two top-notch players gone uh, with one one misstep. You know what? That's how they would have wanted to go. <laughs> that maybe. Yeah, true. That, that's that's how they want to go. And then we can take their ashes and we can put it inside of a inside of a plant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's very interesting. That, that was from that was from a movie. How high? Oh, okay. <laughs> and every time and every time we 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 smoke that plant. Um, their ghosts would come back and tell us funny jokes. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Enough. They've probably seen that movie a ton of times. I'm just I'm commenting on that. <laughs> All right. Enough of that. Yeah. Enough of the macabre. It's really putting damper on. Yeah. Our I'm already happy. It's opening day. We were happy. Day. Emotional roller coaster already. Life, birth, death. All these cool people yeah. dying. Let's think about the people who are alive and will be living and will be playing this year. How can they get better at Frisbee? People ask me that all the time. And I think it's easy to say, I want to be good at Frisbee. It's easy to say, I want to be good at anything. I want to sure. be a star. I want to be successful. I want to be popular. People have asked me, how can I get better at Frisbee? And I say, ask yourself the right series of questions. Okay. And What's the, what's say, the first question I should be asking myself? Well, how, how do you get... Well, one thing I would say to get better at Frisbee is you make yourself faster. Okay, easier said, I guess, than done. But yeah, okay, you want to be okay. faster. But how do you get faster? Okay. You build lean muscle. But how do you build lean muscle? You just you don't, you don't just start taking protein shakes and you build lean muscle. Okay. You got to do so squats. We, okay, well... So well, how do you do squats? How do you do squats That's properly? That's the next the question. Yes. You need to learn the proper technique and, and, and balance. And I think the way to do that is you could call up Bree Prendergast, ask her out on a date to the U of the College gym, and that's what your boys did. We took Bree Prendergast to the gym, where she's going to give us our Frisbee Pro Tip. It's going to be a recurring series this season. Squats with Bree. Let's go to the Utica College. All right, I'm, lo- I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. Okay, discussion points is here at the Utica College weightlifting room. It's your boy Ryan, 
in your broad breathe. Today, we're gonna help you get more lean muscle, to help you get more speed to get better at Frisbee. Bree's gonna show us how to do squats. Ready, Bree? I am ready. Okay, so the first thing that you guys wanna do is make sure that you are going to be shoulder width apart, your feet. You're gonna put most of your weight, actually all of your weight, on your heels. And you're gonna approach the bar. You want the bar to be around your shoulder. And you're just gonna drop it low. So bring it up. Your feet are pointed outward a little bit. And then you go down. Okay, and then where, where should you be feeling this? You should be feeling it right in your butt region and your lower back. Okay, this sounds like a, like an old saying I've heard uh, from from way back in the day. Uh, and you know what that is? That's no glutes. No glory. All right, you got that? Let me let uh, let Ryan try it here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just a little lower than I would have wanted. Tell me if I get this right. Yep. Ooh. Good form, right? Uh oh. Alright, what do you think someone should do if, say, they don't have a fancy gym membership or they don't have all this equipment in their home? That's easy. We're going to do some air squats. So, or you could even use soup cans. But what we do, it's the same thing, you just don't have a bar. So you're going to have your back shoulder width apart, and then you're going to put your weight on your back heels. Shoulder, chest is always up. And you can put your hands together, pray for those good glutes, and go down. And then up. Zero. You got it. All right. Let me try something. I saw it. Ooh, pistol squats. Oh. <sighs> I can't do that. Do one more. <laughs> oh, it's easier with that one. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, I don't think I can do that. Fall. Well, I think a lot, a lot of girls, uh, a lot of girls who struggle with men, they should do squats. That way, they I can use those thighs to get those guys. Let's take it back to the studio, with Brandon and Ryan. We're back to the segment. All right, yeah, you know, I gotta say, b before we go any further, yeah, Bree looked really good. I mean, there was uh, there was there was some good zooms on, <laughs> on that one. But I think one of the most impressive things that I see, I saw in that entire video, was was your one-legged squat. I mean, yeah. Brian, there's there's some there's some guy out there sitting at home on his couch with one leg, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. being jealous of all the people with two legs. Yeah. And he sees what you just did. You've given him inspiration. He said, "I can do that." Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Inspiring one-legged people to build lean muscle. You 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 help you yeah you've helped those people. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And Bree Bree did look good in that video. I mean, if if buns were currency, she would be Warren Buffett. <sighs> if buns were currency. The Utica Frisbee Club would experience its highest period of inflation. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard, you know that hit new Jason Derulo song? Yeah, the uh, one where he's like, but your booty don't need explaining. Oh, you know uh, I heard yeah, he wrote that about Murray. Is that, is that uh, Keep Talking Dirty to Me? Yeah, that was it. it I read that on a rap music. <laughs> uh, where I go, I check out the latest movie. I can see where black guys would like Brie. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. She, sure. She's got what they want. Yep. She's got round body parts, good legs, and a car. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah they, they need that. All right, let's, we're gonna go with a blunt transition. Oh, this. A blunt we're transition. Gonna, uh, we're gonna go right on to our bold predictions. Who will do enough squats to build that lean muscle, to make themselves faster, to make themselves a top performer in the Utica Frisbee Club in 2014? Brandon, who is your pick for 2014 MVP? Your preseason prediction. Should, uh, are we gonna talk about that? Which we. We, we, it may be emotional if we mention this. It's going to be difficult for me to acknowledge this year that AJ Bates okay. is no longer with us. We've acknowledged it on the show. I know we have. I know we have. But I need to move on. I need to look past AJ Bates, and I'm finally going to write a new name on my MVP card this year. And uh, I think finally, after putting in work and getting better, Jake Johnson. Oh, yeah, that guy's finally put it together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's put, in, he's put in work. I think Jake Johnson may be ready for the primetime spotlight. Yeah, I'd say he's probably the bookie's favorite, but I, I like someone a little different. I like Andre. I think Andre's game, it's more well-rounded than Jake. Jake is very good at his one thing he does. He's the best at it, actually. Andre, he was the reigning defensive player of the year. He has a strong arm. He's adding a forehand. He's got speed and leaping ability. I think 
he is uh, he will be your MVP in 2014. Okay, uh, you know now if we we've uh, we've we've taken uh, we used to have offensive and defensive players of the year mm -hmm. and and that made well one year one year yeah, yeah. I made that mistake one year. Um, and if we were in that year, I could see Andre being the offensive player of the year. I mean, he's easily offended <laughs> by, by a lot of things. Okay. Um, but I respect, I respect your choice for MVP. Yeah. It yeah. certainly wouldn't be a surprise. He's been putting in a lot of physical work this year. Uh, he's training for the world maker. Yeah. And uh, a byproduct the of that. Age. Maybe. His age, I believe, is 26. That's perfect prime age yeah. in sports. Okay. Uh, other right. people, uh, you know, Ryan Cooper on the ascent. Ryan sure, Cordero, yeah, yeah. So these are, yeah, these are the only two. We got Those people are that are waiting in the wings. I mean, yeah. I would love a Cinderella story, uh, make like an old guy, like maybe one of us. <laughs> but we only dream about yeah. getting on. Las Vegas course. will take your money for that. They know what I'm saying now. All right. Uh, next. All right, we're gonna we'll we'll go with our next award is defensive player of the year. Okay. Who do you think will take it in in 2014? Last year was Andre. We just mentioned. Okay. I'm thinking. I'm thinking Nick Bruno. Nick Bruno. He's won it before. He's got the pedigree. Right, and you know I'm not gonna say. Well, he, I'm not gonna make a pick based on someone that's new and flashy. Nick Bruno. Um, he he has to. In order for this guy to be alive today, he has to be a defensive person. I mean, people are constantly throwing an onslaught of criticism and 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 just negative negative energy his way. If he's not able to deflect and defend all yeah. that stuff. Being Nick Bruno, you need to be able to defend yourself. Okay. If you are Nick Bruno, you need to defend Nick Bruno. Okay. Uh, keep it on Frisbee. I think he has, oh, good, oh, he has yeah, good anticipation yeah. skills. Yeah, Frisbee-wise. Yeah. I think he has good anticipation skills and, and good aerial skills, good like, ball skills, I guess they call them, in, among cornerbacks in the NFL. He has that. If he, I, I, real quick, I mentioned that. There is a, they've made talk about the adrenaline rush that's produced when athletes make loud noises, like when you're lifting, and you go, ugh. Or when you you know you hit the bat, ah! Tennis players they do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Nick Bruno, I'm curious if he would be as effective if they were to take away his ability to say Ooh. boop <laughs> after yeah, each yeah. one. Okay, my pick. I'm gonna go a little different route. Someone not as well known to us. He was on the rookie ballot last year. Ben Brighton from Cooperstown. Big, Who is this guy? Big ben strong ben young Boop? guy. Strapping young man. Good in the air. Plays hard defense on the frisbee. Gets his hands out. I think he's gonna be. He's gonna. He has the dedication. He wants to be here every week or almost every week. He likes our style. I think you're gonna see Ben Bright and taking down that trophy at the end of the year. Okay. All right. Our third award, Rookie of the Year. This is always a very tough one to pick before the year because you don't know who's gonna show up. Last year we had a couple rookies early in the season make an impact preseason, week one, week two. Then they didn't show up the rest of the year. Listen, first of all, I I want I want to state a few things. I do not like uh, out of all of our 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 bold ass picks. You know, our blunt transition to the bold ass picks. Uh, I don't like the fact that we try to choose a rookie of the year. It's it's like throwing darts at a board. I mean, right. And there's people out there that are too. They just don't understand, Ryan. That's a prediction. Rookie though. of the year is the easiest one to win. All you got to do is show up if you're new, make good conversation, try hard, and I mean, looking good doesn't hurt. But it's really easy to get rookie of the year. I completely disagree. I think our last two rookie classes have been very strong. Tough, great people have been left off of the top three. I mean, sir, it's not the strength. You don't have the whole league competing for it, but I think rookie of the year, it's not easy because you don't know what the heck you're doing. If you're a rookie, you probably don't know what you're doing. Have we, have we had a rookie in recent memory that's gone 12 games? Uh, I'd have to go look at my spreadsheets. On not the off the top of your head, so no. it's possible. But show up 12 games and you'll be on people's... There's the Definitely. primacy recency yeah. effect. Yeah. It's a lot easier than people think. You want hardware at the end of the year? You All you got to do is... Is just show up, be cool, and uh, and you're likely to get that rookie of the year. I will mention one person who was pretty impressive last week at uh, the preseason game, a rookie, Luke Fretzel. Oh. Not only is he born in a different decade than us, not only is he born in a different century, he's born in a different millennium than us. This kid's 14 years old, he's in 8th grade, playing, he had veteran boys out there. It wasn't necessarily spectacular, but we have got people who are in their 20s who make stupid plays all the time, trying to show off and... And, you know, heave it deep. And, no, this kid stayed within himself and really played calm and, and, and played well. I Out of all the children that his parents have had, I like him the most. Okay. Um, and, uh, and, and, again, he's a very, very scrappy guy. His father, extremely, uh, extremely competitive. Yeah. Athletic. Okay. Um, takes his, uh, always takes his son to play basketball. He's, he's involved in a lot of competitive sports. Okay. In fact, I think his Instagram username 
has something to do with Baller for Life or something like that. His father? <laughs> what the heck? That'd be funny, but no, Jeez. I'm talking about Luke. But yeah, okay, you gotta, if you're 50 years old, you got to act like a 50-year-old. You can't call yourself a Baller for Life. You shouldn't be on Instagram if you're 50 years old. Let's move on to Italian Player of the Year, our fourth award. I like. I always like this award a lot. Yeah, because it, it it most conforms to ethnic stereotypes. Yeah, it gives it gives uh, accreditation to people who act like Italians on the field. Yeah, yeah. My pick. I'm going to stick with the Fredsels. I'm going to go with Larry Fredsel to win his first ever Italian Player of the Year. I think Larry is a guy really on the ascent in life right now. He has a prestigious internship. You say he's now. He is. He's it. He is. Remember that ESPN segment about five years ago? Who's now? Like, who's popular? Who the hell remembers something from ESPN? <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> it, it, was, it was so ridiculous and so awful that uh, it stuck in my mind forever that it was a competition to see who is popular and good at going to parties and good at sports. That's what ESPN was talking okay. about. Okay. But I think that's Larry Fredsel right now. He's popular. He's young. He's hip. I think he's one shopping spree at Express away from being... Now, from being one of the most cool people in Utica. Okay, so your definition of a Italian player of the year is being cool and being now. No, no, no it's not. No, no, no. But I, it, you have to be Italian, but I think Larry is upping himself in the eyes of everyone right now. Okay, you know what? Coincidentally, I also would like to pick Larry Fretz will be Italian player of the year, but for completely different reasons. All right? Larry, uh, he's got, first of all, let's go, I'm, we're going based on stereotypes. He's got the skin tone. That olive mm-hmm. skin... A little bit darker. Um, he's got. He, he he likes pasta sauce and meatballs. He must. Okay? Absolutely. I've seen him. I've seen him in action. <laughs> it's trimmed down a little bit. I mean, he's nowhere in you know, like Dan LaBella status, but I mean, he could be if he wanted to be. Plus, the guy also talks a lot with his hands. Yeah. You know, and 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 in fact, uh, and and he and he hits his wife. People think oh. people think that he hits Literally? his wife. Yeah. That he beats on women, um, but. Uh, but I really just think that he was. He's, I said, I said, Larry, Larry, you're beating women over here. He goes, I'm just talking to him. He uses his hands a lot when he when he hits okay. women. So and we're finally in agreement on, on one of these. On one thing, but for different reasons. Reason. Yeah. Okay. What about everybody's ultimate goal? Individual awards are, are they're okay. You Don't want to win the team championship. You want to win the rings. Oh, you asking? Wait, are you are you, are you asking me? I'm asking you. Who do you? What team do you think is going to come out on top in 2014? Are you saying that I'm qualified <laughs> to be in the position? Very much so. Your track record position? is your track record is unbeatable. Yes, that's right, folks. Every time that you've tuned in to discussion points to get a prediction of who's going to win the championship game at the end of the year, you've gotten the correct answer here on discussion points. Last year, it was predicted that Hippo's House of Billiards would win their first ever championship, and people are going to like this. They want to hear some Cinderella story again, probably like. Uh, Bank of Utica coming up Bank and winning. Utica. It's not like they have three percent interest rate on a checking account. Like <laughs> on back does. Yeah, but yeah, but you got to use e statements and, and your debit yeah, card. Yeah, it's easy. Anybody under forty does that. Okay. Um, well, wow. Right off the bat, I can see Barry Sin taking his remote control and throwing it right through, <laughs> right through his television screen. Even though this is an internet. Their CD rights are good. Bank of Utica. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, throw him something. But I'm going again with Hippo's House of Billiards. Okay. I saw the look in 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 Vic County's eye. When, when he saw the championship game, because it was on film, mm-hmm. he's doing everything he can. He is making a move. And there's no salary cap in the Utica Frisbee Club. And I think he's going to stack them up. And, uh, and again, they're going to they're gonna repeat. Imagine a Bank of Utica Forest Hill final. That'd be, that'd be shocking to the people. Sure. I, in fact, I think it would be dissatisfying a little bit. I mean, there's a lot of people there that, uh, out there that haven't grown uh, and attach them to those teams yet. Yeah, they're so, expansion, recent yeah, expansion so teams. Two expansion teams that are there. But you know what? It would make for great great ratings. Yeah. Okay. Great drama and a great story. Well, we the love drama, drama. The drama starts tonight. Be there at 5.30 we'll, to warm up. 5.45, we're going to have our national anthem. We're going to have our first disc. And we will also, we may or may not have the presentation of the rings tonight. Doesn't oh. look like it. Oh yeah, you're you're, you're you're getting your goddamn rings. Okay. Yeah. You and may, then we'll you play. may not get this episode tonight, but you're going to get your rings. We'll draft up the uh, we'll draft up the frisbee teams and play our games of frisbee, and then uh, listen. Is here. We'll come back next week. 2014. We've been doing this eight years, Ryan. We've been yeah. doing Utica Frisbee Club for eight years. Organized. This is incredible. What have we been doing we with our more lives media than years? ever? Yeah, lots of attention. We're totally killing it. In a, in a bad way, not in a hip way. <laughs> All right, we'll see you tonight. God bless. Ah, ah, excited! <laughs>
I really am. This one's for that, that one's for that. All the games come from now on in. <laughs>